Wow. I thought I ate some mustache. It's not nice, particularly when you're having a sandwich and you drag the thing in. Welcome to part 15 of the XL250 restoration, and we're about to start moving really, really quickly on the forks. But not cutlery, on the bike's forks. There's also a few other bits and pieces. Um, I don't know if you can see up here on the decompressor, I forgot to put the spring in. There's a spring that sits behind there. And of course, I thought these were foot peg springs and there was a decompressor spring in here and I thought, uh, no, I'm going to have to take all the cam box off, take the mount off, da -da -da -da, put the spring in, pain in the neck. I managed to open wool. I managed to open the spring up and feed it over the top and get it in properly. So I'm really, really happy with that. That could have been disastrous. Given that I didn't read the manual until after, which is a guy thing. It's like getting a VCR, well, not now, you don't get them, but getting an electrical appliance, plugging it in, try and operate it, doesn't work, then you read the instructions. The girls always seem to read the instructions first, which is wiser. But anyway, that's what I did. So this is all looking really, really good. Now, I've got a few things to show you. Some parts have come in. Some really rare parts David managed to source, which is awesome. Really, really good. And I'm waiting. The all balls wheel bearing kits I've got, two of the seals were wrong. I need bigger seals, and it's the only thing holding me up now. The wheels have all been laced. They've been trued. Dave's just waiting on a couple of tyres. And once he puts the tyres on, this thing comes off the bench, it's on the ground, and we start rebuilding it, like doing the final fitting and all that sort of stuff, wiring it and putting the handlebars on and the controls on and really starting to move forward with it. But I want to show you now a couple of bits we've got. The really, really good thing is we've had two engine pipes which are knackered, and we've got this one here. If Dave managed to source this, it's absolutely perfect. It's got some crummy brazing down the bottom, but I think... I only need up to about there anyway. I've got to measure it against the bike. Got to clean this up and give it a paint job, stick it on the bike, and that's the exhaust finished, basically. Um, flusher cans. Now, the bike had this one. There's six volt flusher cans. Um, this is a three pin one, but we're only using two of the pins. Traditionally, the electronic ones use a third pin and it's an earth. Now, I don't know what the story with that is, whether it's electronic or it's just a bimetallic strip, don't know. This is one off his parts bike, and it's the right part. And what I thought originally was it was one like this, and this one had a load of electrical tape around it to fit inside that rubber. Now this is much better. If I can operate this one, if I can resurrect this to make it work properly, that's the way to go. I've also organized a new horn and rear brake light switch. These are rear linings, and this is the small hub rear one, and these come with springs as well. These are hard to get, and it's only one supplier I could find that had them. Of course, there's the new front ones there as well, so I've got the brakes, so that's all good. The other thing that's really hard to get is this chain guard. Most of them, 99% of them, are broken in this area here. And they're only sort of fitted there. Uh, this needs cleaning up, but it's in mint condition really. It's just a bit faded. We can uh, paint that up and make it look really, really good and stick it on the bike. So I'm really, really happy with that. The fuel tank, which came off beautifully off the gun, I've started to colour sand and I've stopped because of this little mark there. I've stopped because I didn't like the paper I was using. So I've just got to get some 800, take all that peel off, then I can mask that out and put the silver on. Then we can start playing with the clear and the glitter and all that sort of stuff. Of course, on the bonnet of the XW, I've got a headlight bucket that's just waiting to be cleared. And we've got these four swatches. That's got a bit of muck in that one there, but we can rub that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to tape off about two thirds of it leave one third black, do the rest silver, and we can have um, four samples. So we can have a silver one, one with the high flick, the silver glitter, one with the colored glitter, and one with both. Clear them off, stick the red stripe on, and just then we've got some really reliable swatches for what we can do in terms of paint on the tank and the side covers and so forth. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I've not used that glitter product before, so I've no idea how it's gonna behave. But uh, I'm doing this not just for Dave, but for me as well, so I can sort of figure out what I'm doing. And of course, up on the roof of the XC is the front rear guards and the two side covers. They are ready to be painted as well. A quick rub back and we can start applying colour for those. The doors on the XC, this one's completely finished. I've primed behind it. It's all ready to go. This one, of course, the front of it's finished or the face of it is finished. But still got to paint up behind it or prime behind it. You can still, it's still got that blue on it. Now, all I'm waiting on in terms of the XC, I haven't ordered them yet, are the door hinges. I need to put two door hinges on or two door hinge repair kits on. Then we can paint those doors, stick them on the car and get that damn headlining in. But let's begin with the forks. Mind the lawnmowers and chainsaws. In this section of this chapter, we're going to take a grungy old front fork like this, like that, and convert it into an object of desire and beauty like this. Okay, now 
I've elected to polish the leg on this fork. Now, there's a couple of re reasons for that. One is because there was clear coat that was half off, if you know what I mean. So I've decided to polish it to make it look a lot nicer. The process for polishing took about half an hour from go to way. Now, in terms of the few battle scars down here with some black polishing combat in, I'm going to take that out with a bit of prep sole or thinner and a toothbrush. I'm not going to do it now because it's going to drip into that box full of 750 stuff. So it can, it can happen later. These can be clear coated. There's a good chance the clear coat will come off like the original Honda stuff did. In saying that, the best uh, prevention for corrosion, which will only happen in some of the winter months with a lot of moisture and so forth, uh, and it might not happen at all for that matter, the best uh, prevention, I guess, is a bit of light machine or a liner rag just to wipe up and down the legs every now and then. But I think that does look absolutely lovely. So let's get into that now. Okay, so in order to get our forks looking and operating a lot better than what they were, there's a few things we need, of course. I like using brake clean, great stuff uh, for cleaning bits and pieces off and just blasts away a lot of grime and all that sort of stuff, particularly when you're going to clean inside the fork legs and that sort of thing. And of course, you want to poke rags down there with a large screwdriver and then you can poke them back with a smaller one because it'll fit down the hole and fetch them out with pliers. It's up to you how you do it. I've actually fabricated this. Out of nice out of a coat hanger, let me go and get it. This is made out of a coat hanger, it's got a small hook on the bottom. Coat hangers are hardened steel. Now I use this to pull hair out of drains because I have daughters, uh, rather than getting under the house and sort of taking the trap, the sort of, we call it the little trap nut off the bottom. Um, this works the treat and it just sort of fetch the hair out and then flush, flush away and we're good to go. Um, a spanner for your thing on the bottom, for your drain cock on the bottom of where you drain bolt at the bottom of the fork leg. This is a 35mm socket or something to that effect, I can't remember what it is, for an MGB um, harmonic balancer and steering wheel nut. This fits in beautifully inside the fork leg and it also um, just catches the seal beautifully on the outside. Torch to see what you're doing, Allen key to tighten up the bottom, the nut on the bottom and of course various other bits and pieces there. I use Honda Bond uh, just on that copper ring on the bottom just to stop it from um, draining if you know what I mean to stop it from leaking out because I couldn't get the right size copper washer so I've reused the old ones which is dodgy but anyway that's what you need to do this job now let's have a look at this it's a pretty good looking fork the aluminium is in pretty good nick a few scars on it not a big deal I've drained the uh, fork oil out and I want to clean these right out now originally what we wanted to do is a seal there and there are some models that have a boot over here I'll show you in a moment which originally we wanted to do, but the gaiters we've got won't let us do that. The gaiters are very tight against here, and they won't. there's no room in there for um, that other dust seal. Now, that doesn't matter because that does the same thing as a gaiter anyway. Now, the way to get around that, if you do want to run a dust seal and a gaiter, it means you've got to get a bigger gaiter and it's going to flop around a bit, so we didn't want to do that. So this is looking pretty good. The stanchions are in good nick. All down here in the suspension travel part of the stanchion is good. We've got a bit of surface rust, very, very minor, up around where the triple tree clamps in this area and up here as well. So got to clean that off and it's dead easy. Otherwise, it's all looking fairly good. It's a bit ratty around there, but again, I reckon it's going to come off in the bottom part of the leg. Now, traditionally, when people pull these apart, they'll take this cap off. And you can't take these off if the bike is on the ground because that's going to fly up as with weight on it. There's a little bit of spring tension here, but not much at all. Now, in here is an aluminium cap and an O-ring. Of course, being an aluminium cap and a steel spring, there's a shim there to protect the aluminium from pulling apart and all that sort of stuff. So, we can pop the spring out. That's pretty easy. But for now, I'm going to leave it in. It's variable rate. It goes that way with the, with the tighter coils at the bottom. But I'm not worried about that for now. I'm going to pop that back in and I'm going to undo it a different way. So I'm just going to pop that back for now. This stuff stinks, it's never had the oil changed in it. But I'm just going to leave that there for now and I'll pop it on a bench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So at the base of the fork there is an Allen head bolt or a hex head bolt. We can pop that out. We can just pop that out. And it's got an o-ring on it. Not an o-ring, it's got a copper washer on it there. So I need to pop that to the side because we're going to need that to use that again. Um, I haven't got the right size copper washers, so I'm just going to whack a bit of, put it in a bath, you know, just push a bit of Honda Bond onto it. 
So you can plop that over here to one side. And what that will do is effectively release the whole stanchion out of the fork leg. So if I just get a mucky rag and put him on the ground, like that, a bit of oil is going to pop out the bottom. Can we see that? Is that in frame? Okay, and we just literally withdraw it. Oh, yeah. And there's oil. My gosh, is there oil? That shouldn't be coming out because I did drain these. I've just made a horrible mess. All right, let's use more rags. Because Ando is a dill and he's made a mess. Anyway, long story short, let's just pop that out. And put him up on there. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I didn't drain it very well. Or it could be such that that drain plug has been blocked because not much came out. So for now, we'll wipe our stanchion off, just like that. Gosh, I am making a horrific, you know what? I don't make a mess when the camera's off. It's when it's on that I start making a mess. Now there's a cup that's stuck in the bottom of the leg that fits over here. We don't need to worry about that for now. I'm just gonna pop that bolt in there so I don't lose it. Just like that. Give him another wipe down. And stick him under here so he can just look at the Plymouth for a while. Oops, I'll just stick it on that box. Let's look at this thing. This really dirty thing. <laughs> we'll wipe it off first. My gosh, have I made a mess? I never do this normally. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Life's good. Right, let's get closer. Right, so in the top here, if we give that a wipe, there's a, re a retainer. You can get a screwdriver under there, just put your finger on it so you don't lose it. And it looks like that. It's dead easy to get out. And of course, we'll give him a wipe too. And bag it. Okay, now... There's a seal here and it's a double seal and these are really, really easy to get the wrong way because they look very similar above and below, if that makes any sense. I'm just going to get a large screw stick like this guy and oops, try not to mark the leg of it up. I'm just going to pop that in and give it a flick. Like that. And there's the seal there. The only difference between above and below is below it's larger in that gap than it is above. So that's cool. We've got new seals. They're cheap, not a big deal. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run some brake clean down there. Now, I want to clean this out because I don't think you're going to be able to see where you are. But if you look down there, it's going to look fairly horrible. I don't know if you can see that. The other thing, of course, is there's that other piece that's stuck down there. It's in a drilled section of the leg at the bottom. It's pre not pressed in, but it just sort of sits in that rebate. It'll be easier to see relatively soon. And it wells at the bottom. That's cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna chuck a rag down there. A dirty rag, because I don't care. But we do have to be really careful we don't scratch any of the inside parts of the leg. We get another, whoops, another screwdriver. We push the rag back out. Like that. And retrieve it. And we have another look. And we keep doing this until it looks really, really nice and clean down there. At the moment it doesn't. So I'm just going to turn the camera off and just clean it out inside for a little bit and then we'll come back. Right, well an awful lot of muck has come out of this leg. It was far dirtier than the other one. Lots of just debris, just dried muck, dirt, and that sort of stuff. Uh, that's the little piece that goes on the bottom of the leg that that through bolt goes through. And of course, there's our old seal, which I don't want. Most important to get this out because if you don't get it out, all sorts of muck gets trapped there now. The other thing I noticed, um, I'm just gonna clean this out. The other thing I noticed is I did drain the forks and they were still full and that's because this thing here is blocked. So we need to unblock that. And 
then we can start sort of really cleaning it properly. It must be clean inside. Uh, right, so if I get a screwdriver and push it in there, that's block solid. No, it's not. There we go. I've got to clean this all up with prep because I'm painting as well. So we need to make sure that's all clear. That fooled me, and you know what? I should have made damn sure that that wasn't blocked. I'm going to pop some. It's all running at the bottom there, which is good. Brake clean's fantastic. It's not the cheapest stuff in the world. But it's super fast drying and it cleans just so well. Um, I'm just going to have to get another rag. I've used all my sort of secondhand rags on this oil spill. Then I shall come back in a mini. As far as these bits are concerned, we have to be careful. That's got a tiny bit of damage there where it's been dented. But it's up in the intermediate part of the triple tree, so it's not a big deal. The ceiling areas of this are fine now. Bray Scotch Bray. This stuff here is really good for that and of course i wouldn't use these uh, stanchions if they were damaged in that area where the seal goes where the seal runs up here around the triple tree i'm not worried about it um, scotch bright of course is the most versatile restorer's stuff you can get you'll just find you always use it and so in order to make this far nicer we're just going to get all these bumps and lumps off, or lumps and bumps off. I'm going to get a razor blade. Anyway, bits and pieces like that, you can just run over with the blade to knock the top of it, and the scotch bride will do the rest for you. Things like this. Bits of leftover paint. Yeah, will just get rid of them. That's a dent there. But I reckon that's still alright to use. Uh, these are very easy parts to replace the stanchions of the forks. As you said, there's one bolt and two pinch bolts up here that hold the whole thing together. If you do have to rub anywhere around here with scotch bite, do it in an annual way. So go round it. Now we don't have to with this. This one's particularly clean. So I can literally put that away until we're ready to, to put it back together. That's actually a really good nick. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to pop that under here for now. Just so it can have another look at the Plymouth. Okay. Now, let's talk about the legs. And here it is here. Now, Honda have put a clear coat on in this area here, you can see it. Originally the forks would have looked like that, and they've got a very fine grain, annular grain, not up and down. Now, I'd be inclined to leave them, but because we're restoring the bike, it won't look right if we do. So that comes off. All that clear coat's gonna come off quite easily. So if we get a bit of scotchy bright, and run across it that's all it takes to get through it can you see it there it's really really thin so before we bath now you could probably even wipe that with thinner and it'll just probably fall off but we need to get rid of it because it's not serviceable anymore now it is getting thicker in this area here now what you can do and what is probably recommended is wet sanding. Because it does scratch off. And this is the problem with clear. So this area is all off, that's easy. This is the area that all your mud and everything just falls off. But all your mud and your lint and sand and everything has effectively pummeled this area over the last 40 odd years and the clear coat just can't hang on anymore and you can see it is thick in that area there but that's easy to get up too let's see what happens if we get a bit of really dirty parts cleaner thinner this is really dirty thinner comes straight off once it bites in she's straight off Look at that. Just don't create a spark. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just comes straight off. Look at that. When I'm finished with thinner, I generally use it for parts cleaning. Now, I'm not even 
rubbing hard. I'm really being quite gentle with the sticker that we're going to lose, but I don't care about that. And by doing this, it's softening the clear. And we don't want to rub it with anything too hard because it just means buffing is going to be more arduous and difficult. We want to be able to hit this with a buff and just literally pass it over and it's shiny. That's what we do with the other one. Okay. Now, I am not rubbing hard. I'm not breaking a sweat, nothing. I'm not working hard at all. I've got a bit more work to do in here where that transfer is, that sticker is. But those are all done. It's really quick. And look how beautiful that is. You could actually leave it like that if you wanted to. But I am going to polish it. But I'm very happy with how that's coming along. Okay, so this has taken around about 20 minutes to do that. It's still got some scratches in it down the bottom in this area. Pardon me, in this area here and there as well now. That's probably spanners crashed onto there to try and undo the wheel or something. I don't know what that is, but there is a little bit of a jagged spot there. I can run over that with a bit of paper just to get that sharp bit off. But the point is this we can get rid of all those marks and make it shiny and mirror finish. The only problem with doing it though is this is structural, right? The wheel bolt's there, holds the front of the bike up. I'm not interested in any means in thinning out any of this, right? If it's got battle scars there, that's a bit of its story. Even though we're aiming at a new bike and new bikes don't have that. I think safety um, or form over function is probably more important with that. Now, in terms of effort to get down to that, that's been nothing. Absolutely nothing. I've not pushed hard at all. That's a little off cut of scotch bright and some dirty with my hands. Dirty parts thinner. Now, a lot of that dirt on my hands and so forth is actually aluminium oxide. So... It's just been a doddle to do that. Really, really easy. Now that's going to take all of, and I think the one this morning, I went in the room early today before work, because they've got a buff at work, and I think it was about 10 minutes. And when you get it, because these scratches in here are exceedingly fine, you don't have to buff them out. You literally just pass over with the buff as you rotate it like this. And then it just comes out just like the other one. So we can go further and make it mirror, but I don't want to. I want to leave it like that. And I think uh, when we come back, I'll come back tomorrow. I'll go in work early tomorrow or stay back after work or whatever I need to do. Um, then we can just put it back together. It's really, really quick and easy doing this. Right, so I've cleaned our fork leg up. We've got this seal. If you remember, we said the seal is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. It's a double seal. There's a spring on both sides. Really easy to get fooled how that goes. Now, we're using an MG harmonic balancer slash steering wheel nut socket which fits snugly in there, but it won't get stuck. And of course that will also fit against there, so it'll fit against the outside part of the seal so it won't damage it. And now we've got to pop it in, and it goes that way. Now this is quite a, a tight seal to get in, it's easy to damage it, but I'm just going to pop that down against there and put the thing on it and there's also another thing to mention is it's got a step there so it doesn't go right down to the base it actually just goes down to that step and it's easy to get sort of hung up on doing that as well so I'm just going to knock that in and you'll feel it run down it's running down nicely and the tone changes when it's bottomed down so that is installed now and it's all good and then we get our spring retainer out of the bag, leaning over the camera, hope I don't knock it. And that just fits in. That easy. Easy peasy Japanesey. Now, having done that, I'm going to lean over the camera again to get my grease. And in my hand, I have my grease. I'm just going to stick it down here. And I will stick a little bit against the seal and run it around to fill that cavity in the seal with grease. You don't need too much because you don't, but you don't want the, um, what do you call it, the stanchion to sort of drag along it and cause it to get damaged. So there we go. That's pretty good. Do you like it? Right, so to begin with, we've put the new seal in. This is all nice and clean inside. We've really given it a good going over in there. So we're now ready to reassemble this stuff. Now, Inside your forks, there's a few other bits and pieces, of course. Here's the stanchion, which we keep talking about. This is the bit that uh, the spring damper sits in, as well as another one in the form of a, a plastic piston ring. 
and of course in secondary spring damper there that's only just a I think cushion this bit here the other spring sort of fits over the top here uh, of course we've got the cap with the o-ring on it the shim which we can't forget about and the plug at the bottom as well as this little extension part here I don't even know what you call that so basically all it is the stanch is just a straight leg and we drop this in from the end and we shake it around and it's going to pop out of the bottom like that really easy stuff of course then we can get the spring and don't forget the tight coils go down toward the bottom so I'm going to pick that up and hopefully I don't hit the Plymouth and stick that down grabbing my cap and my shim and screw it in the base with oily hands that are slippery now these are very very clean inside hang on a second I can't get a grip on the thing so I'm happy and the piston ring was in good condition so I'm happy that this is all good I just don't want to hit that car I'm sort of watching the plinth at the same time right so they can go back in now I'm just going to pop it down like that for now and we'll talk about how we're going to get this whole thing into the, the leg of the bike. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to clean this up in thinner. I haven't got a replacement owing for that we're going to reuse this one and whack a bit of Honda Bond around it so bear with me a moment. A bit of brake clean. Clean that right off. Feels great in the warm weather that alcohol or solvent whatever the heck it is and we'll just dry that off and then I'm going to cheat because I love this stuff. Oh my goodness, it's going everywhere. Hold on a minute. That's bad. Okay. Then I'll pop some under there, move the washer down, pop some there, and I reckon we're good. Just got to wipe the excess off. This is what we need to do. Well, the first thing we need to do is put that down. And then we get our leg. No, we don't. We get our stanchion. And we put the stanchion down like this. Can you see what I'm doing? I hope you can. And we pop this little thing over. Now, this is going to be, or at least it can be reasonably tricky because when you look at it through here, it doesn't always line up. Can you see how that's out? I can't even bloody well see. Hang on a second. See how that's out there? That round thing, you can't put a bolt in there obviously, well it wouldn't start anyway, but that has to go into the bottom part of the shocker leg where it will stay and won't be able to move. And then of course, we stick our bolt in. Trying not to get that stuff all over us. I feel like I've forgotten something. I don't think I have though. And give it a good tighten. Beautiful. A copper washer with a 10 millimeter bolt, or a six mil bolt, I should say. This copper washer is stupid. It's the wrong size, and I'm even more stupid for using it. They fit quite well under the shouldered bolts, but these ones, we might change those out. That does look gargantuanly dumb like that, but it's going to seal for now so we can revisit that later the other thing we've got which is a pain are these gaiters and the reason they're a pain they're really good stuff and they're, they're like a silicon rubber which is cool but what's painful about them is they're just the right size and getting the clamp the original honda clamp around there is arduous at best so why don't i get that out and straighten it as best we can this was off the original bike it's got a couple of issues, one being the screw's bent, and the second one is the clamp itself is out of round. These things are rotten to the core because they're so tight. I deliberately got tight ones because I didn't want them flopping around. I think it looked terrible. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of CRC on to try and lubricate it down. The issue isn't with the gator so much, it's the fact that I'm trying to use these original clamps, which is probably not good but they're tight as tight and you can see how much resistance there is 
The only way, really, I mean, they do go down quite well if you take this off, but I've got no way of taking that off and then putting it back on. I sort of had to put it on before I stuck the thing on. But we'll just persevere and see how well, or see how far we can go with it. No, I don't think I can do it. We're going to have to come up with something else. I th oh, there we go. So I'm going to sort of push that down. And um, then this will just unwrap around the top there, but I just need to set it up on the bike first. Um, no, I'm not sure. Show you. We can just put that there and then unwrap it or unroll it down over the shock or over the top of the fork. Fiddly bugger. It's going to be your hands are slippery. And they fit beautifully. And we can put a, a tie down there as well. Oh, hang on, we haven't got that on properly. Yeah. I reckon that looks fairly cool. We'll fill it up with the oil and it should be pretty good. I'll give it a wipe first. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? Do you like it? So that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is the last of the bits and pieces and uh, odds and ends type videos. I think next one uh, we'll be getting this bike off the bench, putting it on the ground. We can put the sump guard on, the wheels on, the guards on, all that sort of stuff. Hopefully I've got it painted by then. Uh, but the next video should be in the next fortnight or so, I'm hoping. Um, there might be another one on painting the fuel tank first. That was sort of a separate sub-series I ran, uh, just for those that aren't interested in the bike, but more interested in painting something small at home. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take good care of yourselves, drive safely, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.